Blog Talk Radio. You're tuned in to N5D Radio, the next dimension in radio, where we bring you the hottest, in-depth, spiritual, metaphysical, esoteric conversations and news. Get ready for spirit, body, and mind to expand in three, two, one, 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 one. Greetings. And welcome to Quantum Healing with Candace. I'm your host, Candace Craw Goldman. This program was created to assist humans in this rapidly changing world, and its foundation is based upon the late great Dolores Cannon's work. So thank you, Dolores, for continuing to be here with us. And also thanks to Greg Prescott and Michelle Walling at N5D.com for making this show possible. With humanity's new understanding and acceptance of the quantum world and the role that consciousness plays in shaping both our individual and our collective reality, we have plenty of subject material. I am a full-time practitioner of Dolores' hypnosis method and had the honor and privilege of working with and alongside of her for several years. You can find out more about my practice at newearthjourney.com. And before we get started tonight, for those of you looking for a practitioner of Dolores' method, you may find these wonderful people at DoloresCannonQHHT.com. That's DoloresCannonQHHT.com. Also, if you'd like to participate live on the show tonight, please call in the U.S. this number, 646-716-8890. That's 646-716-8890, and we'll try to answer as many calls as possible. Tonight is Friday, November 13th, 2015. Yes, it's a Friday the 13th. And have you ever wondered why this has been considered an unlucky day? Friday the 13th occurs when the 13th day of the month falls on a Friday, which superstition holds to be a day of bad luck. And in the Gregorian calendar, this day day occurs at least once, but at most, up to three times a year. There are a lot of people that are superstitious about Friday the 13th. However, not very many have a full understanding of the significance of this day. It's been suggested that one reason that Friday has been considered an unlucky day is because according to Christian scripture and tradition, Jesus was crucified on a Friday. And there's some other Christian stories that contain Fridays. They say that Adam and Eve, um, you know, had the their fall on a Friday. They say that the great flood began on a Friday. And the Knights Templar in the year 1307 on a Friday the 13th, had many of their members arrested by Philip IV of France for heresy, blasphemy, and and other crimes. So it's considered an unlucky day for those reasons. The actual origin of this superstition, though, appears to be a tale in Norse mythology. The day Friday is named for Frigga, the free-spirited goddess of love and fertility. And when Norse and Germanic tribes converted to Christianity, Frigga was banished in shame to a mountaintop and labeled a witch. And it was believed that every Friday, the spiteful goddess convened a meeting with 11 other witches plus the devil, a gathering of 13, and plotted ill turns of fate for the coming week. For many centuries in Scandinavia, Friday was known as the Witch's Sabbath, with Friday the 13th having an eve even deeper, more sinister significance. And of course, women have 13 cycles in a year. And there's other significances of the number 13. 13 moon cycles, lunar calendar has 13 months. Romans require 13 guests to be present at weddings and the Hebrew faith age of 13 is considered to be an adult. So in fact, actually Friday the 13th can be a very lucky day. 
Friday is also associated with Venus, the Roman goddess of love and beauty and fertility. And Friday is viewed by many pagans as a day to perform any magic related areas of expertise, which love. The number 13 has been a magical number since the ancient Egyptians the ladder to eternal life. They believed that there was 12 steps on the ladder to the eternal lasting life. So 13 for the Egyptians was associated with immortality and ascension. So yes, it is Friday the 13th and tonight's show is an open line show. And I invite any Q even a session with the great Dolores Cannon herself to call in this evening and share your story. The number again is 646 Seven one six eight eight nine zero. There's been a big interest in many of you as possible, but do know that we're going to do more open shows in the future. So if you don't get to tell your story tonight, you will have more chances in the future to do just that. So I thought I would start out um, this evening by telling a brief QHHT session story, not of my own, but one from the lovely lovely Yamaguchi of Zurich, Switzerland. She's a part of our dedicated practitioner community, the original support forum of Dolores Cannon and her work and her practitioners who do her work. So here's what she writes in. It was a rainy day and the higher self was telling her client how important it would be for the client, a woman, to open her heart and to let the light flow in and flow out of her heart. And the woman was told this many times. And the air was wondering that maybe she could not sense how important it was. So in a direct conversation with this woman, her client's higher self, she asked if it was possible to make her feel, actually feel what it feels like to have her heart open so that she could look forward to feeling that feeling. And to both of their surprise, the higher self says, yes, we can do that and we can do it right now. And in, a, in that moment, the client just took a deep breath, almost in a shocking way, and she made a very surprised sound and opened her arms, pushed them high up into the air very quickly, and then what happened at that moment was very surprising. In the room where the session was being taken place, the window just opened in in a big fat burst and a lot of leaves came into the room with a gust of wind. Amir was completely paralyzed and she was absolutely sure that she had closed and locked the window. And after the session, the client told her that at the same moment when the window burst open, in her mind, the whole room was filled with light coming in like a river from the window. So that's a lovely little brief session story that I wanted to share with you all from the lovely Mier Yamaguchi of Zurich, Switzerland, because it's a little bit past her bedtime and she wasn't going to be able to be with us today. But there are several people on hold getting ready to tell their stories to all of you out there. And the very first person that I would like to welcome to the program is the lovely Georgiana DiCarlo, and she lives in Pennsylvania. Hi, Georgiana. Hi, Candace. <laughs> How are you doing this evening? Thank you so much. Oh, yes. It's, um, thank you for having me on the show. I really appreciate it. QHHT has made such a tremendous difference in my life. I had a a couple sessions for myself earlier this spring and after reading some of Dolores' books, and it was just so amazing, such a connection for myself that I decided that I really wanted to, to do this so that I could share that with other people. And it's just been amazing. I've had so many people that have experienced healings and just real awakenings. It's made such a difference in their lives. So 
I'm really excited to be able to to be on the show and talk about that. Super. Well, why don't you tell us a story or two, maybe one of your favorites? Uh, sure, yeah. Um, what I wanted to share with everyone tonight um, was something that another practitioner had suggested, too, because it's something that I think that um, we can all relate to if um, we're looking at different ways of improving ourselves, whether it's healing our bodies or just getting better in touch with ourselves. Um, we do tend to, to take ourselves sometimes too seriously. And so this was the session where uh, a very good friend of mine, we've been friends for about almost 15 years, and she's an amazing person, and she's been through a lot of, of really difficult times, and she's very loving, very kind and forgiving. And so she, we've come to a lot of the same conclusions, you know, spiritually. And so when she learned that I was doing this, she was so intrigued. She said, well, I definitely want to have a session. So we were so excited, and and she was, you know, doing some meditations and thinking about, wow, you know, what could I have been in a past life? And so we, we joke around with each other a lot, and she says to me, well, I really think that I'm probably going to end up being like a, a young Japanese girl because I'm really drawn to that culture and I love the the paintings and the sculptures and the, the architecture and the food and of course she's just a you know a little Pennsylvania country bumpkin like myself she doesn't have any <laughs> any type of background there's nothing there that would draw her to that other than that that's just where she's been drawn to. So we were anticipating this really fun session of discovering, you know, what what would be in store for her, and uh, it wasn't like that at all. Um, we <laughs> talked a lot about, yeah, <laughs> the first session. I, I told her, I said, you know, honestly, my experience for myself, and I was very fortunate to have a, a great practitioner, um, Lori Paulina, he's in Buffalo, and he was so open with with talking to me about how to prepare for a session and mainly he told me he was like you really need to um, be open and allow anything to happen you know it's it's nice to have expectations you want to have goals but you also have to keep an open mind and really take some time to try to find that inner voice yourself you know, and so I worked on that before my sessions, and I really think that helped me a lot. And so I talked with her about that. So even though, we, you know, she was really anxious, the the lifetime of a Japanese girl, she was she was staying open minded. But we we were both very sure that it was going to be like very lighthearted, fun. And as it turned out, um, she she was regressed very easily, and she ended up being with referred to as a somnambulist she had no memory at all of this session which is pretty unusual these days the way I understand it Mm -hmm. and she just felt like she was stuck she just kept saying I I just I'm, I'm stuck it was a very uncomfortable feeling and um she had worked through so many episodes of abuse from childhood and like I said she's a a very forgiving and loving person but um, when we were talking after the session because we you know part of the QHHT sessions is to spend a great deal of time doing an interview um, in the session itself and then at the after the session you put it all together and see how that can help you move forward in your life. And so even though I know her really well, we did the interview. And the session itself, um, she, I, I knew that she was going to be disappointed <laughs> because mm-hmm. I worked all different ways to try to help her through this, and it was just this feeling of being stuck. And, you know, you can only keep someone in a regressed 
state for, you know, a certain period of time. And she had already gotten up to go to the bathroom. And I had not experienced that before through my training and and, um, other practitioners sharing their stories. I knew that that could happen, so I was prepared for that. But, yeah, she um, required my assistance all the way through to the bathroom, and that's when I realized how under she really was. We got back and uh, continued with the session. And so when we were talking about it, she she had no memory of it, but she also was, like, you know, disappointed. She just wanted, like, well, I just wanted some past lives. You know, what was this about? And so we talked a lot about it, and she said that she did experience um, a, during the session a feeling of a woman leaning over her and she goes you weren't leaning over me were you and I said no I I sat right where I was sitting and she said well I really felt like there was a woman with long blonde hair just like very near my face like looking at me like you know like she cared about me she loved me she was just near me and it was a it was a good feeling but she said I just I still felt like very stuck and so we said, well, you know, this is the way things go, and and we live near each other, and we made arrangements for another session. And so before that session came, her and I were both talking about things a lot, and I said to her, you know, I know that you've done so much work to forgive everyone in your life, and I just keep feeling like, you know, it's still weighing you down, you know, you're stuck, and, and she's agreed, and I said, you know, I just am getting the feeling that maybe you need to take all of that, because there was such just a, a horrible amount of abuse. I said, just, if you can imagine taking all of that and just putting it into, like, a giant bag, putting a, a rope around that and taking like a giant pair of scissors and just cutting that off so that weight is just away from you. You know, you can thank all of those people for giving you those lessons in your life because we come to understand that even situations where we feel we've been victimized, we end up being able to grow from that. And so you can just say thank you for the lessons and I appreciate that and I forgive you and I release you and I let you go. And she said, she's got children too, and those those uh, quiet moments are sometimes few and far between. But she happened to be taking a ride in the car, and she said, uh, well, you know what, or she was planning to, and she said, well, you know what, I'm going to be in the car for a while, and I'm, I'm really going to do that. I'm going to imagine that, and she did. And she said, well, she was going down the road. She just imagined that, you know, she just released all of that. And so we met for the session, and she was all excited. She goes, you know what, that was really strange um, that I actually felt lighter after I did that. And I, you know, and I said, well, that's the way it is. Even though you feel sometimes like you've let go, it can still linger. So we were really looking forward to, you know, this session now. Now we're going to get somewhere. We're going to get to some past lives, and this is going to be fun. And <laughs> mm-hmm. so we... We still did an interview, and we still um, talked about exactly what she was uh, wanting to know from the session, and we identified parts of her body. She's got a, a lot of of physical problems. She has a history of surgeries, and she's been physically abused, you know, when she was a child, but also most recently from an ex-husband. And he had punched her in the head so hard Mm. that it drove her jawbone up into her left ear and smashed the bone. She has no hearing in her left ear. Well, she has no insurance or anything. This happened really like a couple of years ago or even longer than that. And so she's just dealt with this, and, you know, it, it's healed, but it never healed correctly, and she doesn't have any hearing in the ear, you know. So these were all things that we had mentioned also in the first session, pinpointing, you know, to, to heal, and we just really didn't get anywhere. So these 
uh, problems we brought up again, and we said we would really like to to have this healing. And and um, so when we started the session, um, once again, we're anticipating, you know, entering perhaps a past life. And, you know, we explained to her, too, that you don't always go into a past life. It really is about the client receiving whatever their higher selves believe that they need. So whatever it is that you need to reach your goals in this lifetime, you'll get that. It might not be what your conscious mind is anticipating, <laughs> but but you'll get it and you know, and you'll come to understand that wow, that wasn't what I expected, but it is what I needed. So we had talked about that, but as the session began, um I could see that she was as deep as she'd gone before, and when we started talking, and it was a very kind of a low mumble, then all of a sudden she just starts laughing like this great big belly laugh, and I'm kind of, you know, where I was still trying to get to the point of, you know, can you tell me what's around you? <laughs> and mm-hmm. she just started laughing, so, and she was like, not now not now and I was like okay so what is so funny and she just roared with laughter well I'm sitting there and I'm like well this is really weird (laughs) I'm giving her a little you know a couple more minutes okay well it's great that she's this happy you know I'm letting her just be in the moment and then all of a sudden it's like contagious you know it's like opening one of the cards that has a little laugh box in it in the store. You know, at first it sounds ridiculous, and then you can't help but snicker and you start laughing. That's the way it was for me, and I started laughing and laughing. And and then I, after like five minutes of just really laughing, I'm like, what am I doing? I am supposed to be in control of this session. Now stop it, Georgie. What are you thinking? So I'm like admonishing myself. Well, wait a minute now. And just another fit of laughter again and we laughed for like over an hour okay but during this time and I'm not even kidding you I felt like exhausted I was like sweaty and tired my belly hurt I'm like I have never laughed like that and I know she hadn't either and you know we've had a lot of laughs together we've we actually lived together a few years ago at one point her house actually burned down on Christmas Eve, and her and her four kids came and lived with us. So we, we've lived together for months, so we've shared a lot of stories and, and times, but never anything like that. And I'm trying to, like, conduct the session while she's laughing. And I was, oh, okay, she's stopping now, so I'm going to try to get some information. She had a lot of questions. Like I said, there was a lot of healings that she wanted, and they just kept saying, Not now, not now. She says, I'll I'll tell you later. I'll tell you later. And I'm like, but Jen would really like this help for now. And by the way, she said she didn't mind, you know, if if I used her name or anything, because I said, I know it's going to pop out of my mouth and I'll be, I'll feel terrible because I want to, you know, she says, oh, no. She goes, I'm, I'm very much okay with that. So. But anyway, she. So um, what was the laughing about? Did you ever discover that? Yeah, we did not <clears throat> we did not discover it until after the session on the way home. I was driving her home and we are both like now I am telling you this laughter at one point like I was laughing so hard then I looked at her and it actually like freaked me out because her her chin was like down on her chest and she was doing this like ho 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 and it gave me this feeling of like, you know, like in movies where you'll see like a silly laugh, you know, and then all of a sudden it turns to like this ha, 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 and it's kind of creepy looking. And I thought, what in the world is going on? And then it's to, I started laughing again. Well, during the session, I, I said, what is going on here? And she says, oh, you two do this all the time, you know, in <laughs> Her higher self is saying this to me. Oh, you two do this all the time. And I said, no, we don't. We've never (laughs) laughed like this. Yes, you do, just not here, not now. 
And so there was some information in there, but mostly it was all, I'll tell you later. And I did ask, who was this woman that was with her during the first session? And there was a lot of laughter. And then, oh, that is her sister. She's always with her. Now, that, like, stopped me in my tracks because her sister was four years old when their father beat her to death. Oh, my. And so that's when I say the abuse was severe. It was really severe. And both of her parents ended up in prison over this. But, of course, she was, uh, my friend was eight years old at the time that her four-year-old sister was murdered that way. And so for me to hear that, it just brought tears to my eyes. My goodness, this is your sister who's never, you know, she's still around you, who's never left you. <clears throat> and and she's roaring with laughter over that. Oh, yeah, that's her sister and still laughing. And I'm like, oh, my, this is inappropriate. We should not be, la-, you know what I mean? Like it was mm-hmm. just felt like this is supposed to be serious. Why are we doing this? <laughs> So, you know, and and I was fighting with myself saying, wait a minute, this is, you know, something that we we have to honor, like in this very kind of a solemn way. There's a method of doing things, and sure, it's okay to laugh a little bit, but my goodness, this is inappropriate, you know. (laughs) Well, when we got done with the session, she says to me, "I, I do have some memories of laughing and feeling like my conscious mind is saying, stop laughing like that, you sound like an idiot. (laughs) <laughs> and she said, but, you know, and so I'm like arguing with myself, why am I doing this? And so we had a, a long discussion after the session. And as I was driving her home, she was just like, I don't even understand this. And I said, I don't either because we didn't get any. Le-. And then she looked at me and she says, my jaw is healed. And I wow. said, what? She goes, I am not kidding you. She goes, my, and, and we both started crying. <laughs> I was like, that is what that was about? And she said, yeah, because she was looking at having to have surgery to have this jaw repaired, and it was not going to be anything easy, of course, but it was also going to, like, put her out of work, and there's such a long recuperation time. And she just said, my jaw is complete. And it's still, it, this, this session happened in May, and she's doing better than ever now, but, yeah, her jaw is completely healed. So all of the problems that were happening because her jaw was misaligned that way have been healed also. But it just took our breath away. It still does for me to even think about that that is why her jaw was so distorted when she was laughing. Right. It was, right. like, drawn down so low that it looked so strange you know and I thought Uh my god to have your jaw healed any other way would be like excruciatingly painful you know and yeah her jaw was completely healed that's amazing Georgie just amazing and and another wonderful thing about laughter being great medicine too right yes and that's what that's what um, I kept getting from her when I was trying to say I think we need to (laughs) get back on schedule here you know what I mean and it would just be like you take things too seriously you just need to lighten up and I'm like but this is a serious world we live in you know not that I don't have a sense of humor I do but I mean like when we're looking at you know um, evaluating this this lifetime that we're in and trying to reach goals and everything I'm like um, I like to have things on schedule. I like to have a plan, and I like to, you know, go through it that way. And basically, she just, like, laughed me out of the room. She was like, huh, yeah. <laughs> you need to just lighten up. Everybody needs to lighten up. You you just take everything so seriously, you take all the fun out of it. And you need to remember that this is all a game in the sense of mm-hmm. you can set your direction, but if you really want to get in touch with your higher self and your spiritual part of yourself, then you have to open up that doorway. In order to open up, you've got to let go of trying to control things. Mm -hmm. And when you laugh, 
you release and you heal, well, and I've done a lot of research on, like, laughter as part of healing, and I just was not aware of so many people that have actually experienced amazing healings through laughter. Mm-hmm. And like I said, that was certainly nothing that she and I were familiar with. And we were so determined that time, okay, we're going to get a regular session here. <laughs> you're going you're gonna to behave yourself and stop laughing. And you're That's laughing right. Exact, exactly and what, here, what you needed. The laughing was the key, yeah, you know. <laughs> Georgie, so, yeah. thank you so much for coming on the air and telling us the story. Would you Would you tell our listeners how to find you? Where are you located? Certainly. Um, I am in Countersport, Pennsylvania, which is mm-hmm. right at the northwest part of Pennsylvania, almost on the New York State border. Mm-hmm. But I do have a website, mm-hmm. if anyone would like to visit that. It's QHHT, Georgiana DiCarlo, which is G E O R G E A N N A D E C A R L O dot com. Oh, super. Thank you so much for taking some time out of your lovely Friday the 13th evening to talk to us, Georgiana. <laughs> really, so, so kind Thanks. of you. Thank oh, you. Oh, thank you. <laughs> okay, have a All good right, night, Candice. Talk to you later. Bye-bye, Georgie. Okay, bye-bye. Oh, well, isn't that amazing? Really a wonderful session from a really lovely, lovely woman. And we've got several callers waiting in queue, so I'm going to... Just pick the next one, and we have Suzanne Franzen now, and she is in Hawaii. Hi, Suzanne. Oh, Hold on. Suzanne, we've got you on a couple different things. You, I'm gonna I'm gonna click over onto your telephone. I think you, you're in you're connected in two different ways. Let's see. Yes, I, I, did, did, I, I, I didn't want to miss out. <laughs> there you go. Well, if you would turn your um, computer on mute, we'll be able to hear you a little better. I, I turned it off, and I'm on the phone. Perfect. Hi, Suzanne. Yeah, I think. Hi. hi. <laughs> well, it's only about 3.30 here in the afternoon, bright, sunny, lovely day in Hawaii. Well, welcome to the show, Suzanne. I know you and I have been um, communicating back and forth, and and I've been reading a little bit about uh, um, a a book that you've got coming out, and I think it's some of uh, what's in that book that you want to share with us this evening. Well, I, I would love to do that, but you know, before I do that, I would like to share a session that somebody took me through as the client. Okay. For, for this particular show, and maybe we can do a longer thing about the book later because it's an awesome project. Excellent. But Sounds session, like a great idea. The, yeah, because I just want to keep this short. I want everybody to have a chance, you know. Sure. Well, yeah, being a practitioner is absolutely the joy of my life. Uh, I fall in love with every client, and it's, it's expanded my, my field of being so much. But the reason I want to tell you this session that um, a practitioner took me through was is because before I um, really became a, a practitioner in fullness, I will call it, um, I was really afraid of people, very afraid of people, and I was very, very shy, very reclusive. I I hid. I wanted to be anonymous. <laughs> So, okay, that's enough on that. So I didn't know that this was going to happen in the session because I didn't wasn't addressing that particular um, uh, condition. But what happened was so magical. I um, got into the session and I was definitely in expanded awareness, and I was huge. I was so big, and then I was taken by my hair self to the earth and I felt myself having to contract, become smaller and smaller and heavier and heavier. And finally, when I got 
into the life that they were showing me, that they wanted me to experience, I was an elephant. Oh. <laughs> an elephant. It was so wonderful. And so an elephant, in our viewpoint, is big, right? But, mm-hmm. but I had to contract and become so small to get in the elephant. So wow. anyway, what happened then was we had a wonderful lifetime. I loved being an elephant. I loved the feel of my ears flapping, and I loved the com- companionship of the other elephants, that we were a tribe, and we all took care of the babies together, and we didn't have ownership over the babies. It was wonderful. And wow. So, yeah, that was a really lovely thing. We communicated telepathically we were very much love beings and it was a great life but what happened was at the end of the life uh the white man came the hunters and we had no clue about them we didn't know about them because they had never been a part of our reality and when they shot us all and decimated our whole family it was so horrific to me that that's where I completely shut down and brought into many lifetimes after that a lonesome life, an alone life, stay away from people, they're dangerous, you don't know what they're going to do. It threw our tribe of elephants into total chaos when they started shooting us. Wow. So, yeah, yeah. So what happened in the session for me, though, was... The, the the release of that, um, once he got to the place where he said, higher self, you know, why did you show me that life? That was really awful uh, at the end. And they said, well, because you made a mistake in calling forward the trauma at the end of the life. What we wanted you to know was how wonderful the life as the tribe of elephants was. We wanted wow. you to embrace being with others, being in community, being able to communicate in other ways than just language, and caring for the family rather than being independent and having your life be all for you. So when that dropped in, it changed my daily life as Suzanne because all of a sudden I was wanting to go to parties and go out to dinner and meet people. (laughs) I got it. I got the healing from a mistaken conclusion I came to about the life of an elephant. That's just such a wonderful story, Suzanne. So let me ask you this. In your whole life up until the time of that session, did you have any sort of affinity towards elephants? Did did you ever pay attention to them at all? No, no, no. There wasn't wasn't any particular connection to that. Uh -uh. Interesting. And and since then, how Mm -hmm. how do you view elephants if they come across your path? I'm sure you think about them differently now. Well, uh, it's like a, the, a, a new, I mean, I, I had abandoned, I think, the whole idea of elephant. That's why it hadn't come up in my life, because it was such a traumatic ending to that life as an elephant. Mm-hmm. So until it came back through in a quantum healing session, I just, you know, discarded <laughs> the whole experience about elephants. So since then, it's like not only elephants, but all animals, like the cows in the meadow and how they operate as a family with their babies. It's, it's amazing. Yeah. And, yeah. and um, even our pets, how I'm, I'm just much more connected with all animals now, I, I, with all of life, I would say, everything in life, I, all the I people. Really, and, and the memories that you have, like you say, you know, the ears flapping and some other things. So... <laughs> I, I just love this so much. You know, I just love animals so much anyway. Um, so yeah. you know, this is fascinating to me on many levels. But um, may I ask just a few more questions? So so like sure. when when you're in water, uh, you know, taking a bath or swimming, I know you swim in the ocean, don't you? Do you ever think yes, about, I do. you know, 
about elephants in water when, when you're doing those kinds of things. I'm just wondering how much this session has kind of has stayed with you. Well, the, the main thing that stayed with me about the session is the mistake I made in abandoning humanity <laughs> and right. people. And then I keep coming in as a human being and then not wanting to be a part of anything having to do with human beings because they're very dangerous, right, was how I was before. And now right. it's such a liberating thing. The elephants themselves, um, you know, I would just, any time if they walked out and came and knocked on my door, I would be embracing them. <laughs> but uh, I don't feel a need. There's no need anywhere to mm-hmm. connect with them or do anything about them or... You know, sometimes I hear stories of things that are happening to elephants in Africa now, and I, I'm sad, sad about it, because some human beings are still not um, aware of that that's another yourself. It's another right. myself. And yeah. how could I possibly harm something that is me? Yeah. And, yeah. and so I think that's the impact of having to and getting to see yourself or feel yourself as another being Mm -hmm. that you can't dishonor them after that. Beautiful. What a beautiful story. Well, thank you so much. Thank you. Is that that what you wanted to share with us tonight? That's what I wanted to share. And I know we'll have another (laughs) chance to do about the book and the the quantum healing uh, client that I had that was so fantastic. I love you so much. Thank you for all you're doing, and I'm looking forward to hearing other people's stories. Oh, thanks, Suzanne. Thanks for taking time out of your day to give us a call and tell us about your wonderful elephant session. Have a good afternoon. Yes. Thank you. Thank you. (laughs) Bye-bye. Bye, Bye, Suzanne. You can find Suzanne Franz, and I didn't ask what her website is, but she's in Kauai, and you can find her listings on our main website, Laura's Cannon. QHHT.com. That's Laura's Cannon, QHHT.com. And the next lady up is the lovely Lorraine Tilson. Hi, Lorraine. Hi, Candace. How are you? <laughs> I am great. I am in Kansas City, which means I get to go out to dinner every night at restaurants and eat amazing food. We had, oh a, my tap- God. We had a tapas. Um, dinner tonight it, it was just phenomenal and i'm having um, a lot of fun up here um uh, for the weekend so i'm having a great time and 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 this has been a great show so far and i'm really happy to finally get to talk to you um and hear oh, your voice well, thanks. <laughs> thanks for having me you, you know i grew up in kansas so i know exactly what you're experiencing <laughs> did you now where in kansas did you grow up i grew up in a small town called wetmore kansas and it's uh, north of Topeka. Wow. So yeah, that's that's up in the northern parts, not not exactly where I am in the um, southeast, south central part. But um, no, but you're you're, all... you're by you're in Wichita. But my ex husband is from Lyons, mm-hmm. Kansas, which is very uh-huh. very close to that. Yeah, yeah. So what story do you have to share with us this evening, Larry? Yes, well, thank you so much for for letting me be on the program. Um, I want to share a story. So I've been a a registered nurse for the last 25 years, and I did a session with another registered nurse that I used to work ICU with who's just a spectacular human being. And what's fascinating about this is her session came right after I'd been reading one of Dolores' books called Convoluted Universe Book One. Mm-hmm. And she recommends that you read these in order. So she recommends that you start with custodians beyond abduction and then move into Conv- convoluted universe book one. And I agree. I think that is the best way to start. And when I had been reading this book, I was fascinated with the story of Bartholomew, where the, these lights of, um, in the spirit world we were um, being instructed that when they came down into the earth, they would go into, they could go into uh, many bodies um, at one time, and they were able to brighten them up uh, to help them so that their life on earth wasn't so dark and difficult. And this uh, person that I had this session with, this female nurse, uh, who's almost 60, and um, she was somnambulistic, which, you know, 
people should know that not everyone goes into that state, and that state, you know, means that when they come back from the session and you're sitting out talking about it, they don't remember any of it. So it's a fascinating state of mind. And as a matter of fact, she had gotten up a couple times to go to the bathroom, and at one point when she had got up, she literally saw the boots that she was wearing in a past life. That That is how deep into trance that she was. Wow. Um, so, yeah, I know. It's amazing. So she started out, and her her session, uh, in these sessions, people can pop around a lot. So she went into her current life as a child and um, reviewed some of the issues that, that they had as a family with an alcoholic father and a brother and, you know, a fight that they had had, and, and then moved into um, – Uh, A friend had a sister who was murdered uh, when she was in the woods carrying her kayak, and that had actually happened. And what's interesting is when in the pre-talk that she and I were having, she kept rubbing um, between her shoulders, uh, right below one of the shoulder blades. And after this, during the session, what came up is she saw this this girl being killed in the woods. And that this, this darkness was able to appear and disappear. And and she was very uh, fearful when she saw this. And then um, often is in these sessions, they will hop around. And then she's in another life where she's a female who's very strong. And these were the brown boots that she actually saw in that life and that she saw when she got up from the bed to go to the bathroom in my house, which was fascinating. Wow. And um, then uh, then from there, she went into another past life, and she had actually, in, in her current life, she was shelter, sheltering a homeless man in her garage. And in this past life, she meets him, and she's male, and he's female in that past life. And uh, she was 40, and, and he was in his 20s as a female. And what they did for um, the, the the tribe that they lived with is they gathered the food out in the ocean, and they just were very good friends. And she was able to bring up just great detail with with uh, the jewelry that they wore, and you know beaded bracelets, and you know how small the beads were, and it was just fascinating the detail that she was able to get. And then she finds herself in, in a wooded cabin, and um, you know, this was in Wyoming, Jackson, around the 1800s, and uh, what she was doing there. And then she moves into the spirit world, and this is where she starts talking about being one of these white lights that I had literally just read in Dolores' Convoluted Universe with uh, being one of Bartholomew's lights. And this was just a wow session for me. It just tied it all together. It was like I'd reached the threshold of believability with the spiritual world, and it was fascinating. And wow. um, so we, we talked, yeah, we talked in detail about how she goes into someone and, and what that means and how, um, how she helps them and what would happen if she didn't go into them, you know, that their, their lives wouldn't be as bright. And that she goes into these people because their, their thoughts need to change. And she is able to literally help them, uh, you know, change their thoughts in the world. And this then starts changing their outer world. And I can tell you for certain that this is what this person has done for me. Um, So, and then, you know, we call in the the higher self, which we call the subconscious. And it asks, you know, why uh, she was shown all of these, all of these different lives. And it just told her exactly why she she saw all of these things she she went into her her family stuff of origin um because you know that was their lives and not her life uh she went into the as the strong woman in the woods because that represented strength and it was important for her to see this she saw the girl being murdered because that was her story not her story and actually we cleared uh that she, that fear was stuck between her shoulder blades that she had been rubbing on in, in the pre-session. So that showed up actually to be cleared in this session, and it was. And, and then, wow. you know, why why she was able to see the homeless man and, you know, just to see that there's compassion and friendship and that that is sustained from life to life 
and that this doesn't really ever separate. And uh, as the man in the cabin, she saw that she'd been alone many times, but, you know, it's still okay, and she's solid, and she has friends. And then she went into the spirit and saw all the bodies helping people, so she knows that, uh, you know, her work in this lifetime, that that is what she's doing. And I can guarantee you, because I know her, that's exactly what she does. So this was really a wow session for me, and um, I thank you so much for allowing me to share it with everyone. Oh, you're very welcome. So do you have a, do you have another session? Do you, I, I thought there might have been two you were talking about wanting to share. We've got time if you have a second one. Oh, okay, sure. Um, another session that I um, uh, had is, is with uh, a, a young man who's actually from Mexico, and he's had a, a very suffering life. He was abused by his father, and then just also a lot of uh, sexual molestations when he was younger also. And he he's having a great deal of difficulty when he came in for this session. So he first sees himself as a, a male soldier in Mongolia. And he's he's watching as these men... Uh, go through a village and they're raping women and, and they're killing people and they're burning villages. But he's also seeing himself as his higher self, shaking his head, like, what are they doing? Um, and then he goes uh, into the next, the next life where he's sitting outside in a body of water and um, he's making fun of pretending to meditate and, and, um, He's, he realizes that he's, he's an actor. And in this life, he's, he's very promiscuous, and, and he dies young as he doesn't really fulfill his role as a great actor. He gets uh, stabbed on the left side of his body uh, by a stranger who is robbing him. And then he, he moves into the spirit world, and he's greeted by another part of himself that's watching him high up on a cliff. And his higher self is is shaking his head, you know, watching uh, things in both lives. And then he's greeted by his higher self who just gently touches his face and, and he hugs him and he realizes that he's, that he's loved. Um, then he goes into another life where he is, you know, watching gazelles eating grass and then he's hunting. And, um, and then, then he, gets, he gets married and he's 19 and she's 17 and they're very, very happy and he goes away and, and he's hunting. And when he comes back, the entire tribe is dead from a disease. Their skin was red and swollen and they had giant blisters and fever and vomiting. And they died finally when they couldn't breathe. So he burnt all the bodies. And he had three children who also died, two boys that he knew from his current life and then one girl. And so he wanders for a long time and he just almost loses his mind. When he meets a medicine man and studies with him. And the medicine man, medicine man lives alone, but he helps people in a village nearby. And he, I, I asked him, how did he help heal you? And one of the things that he made him do was he, he made him work hard physical labor to distract him from his mind and his pain while he healed. And he also used like drums and feathers to call his spirit back to his body, which was in fragments. And he taught him how to focus his mind and he, he helped him to make him whole through ceremonies with plant medicines and meditations and, and interesting how, how to jump into portals and go into other worlds. So this was a very deep session. And then um, it took him about seven years to heal. And I said, well, how, how did you know that you were healed? And he said, because he was able to enjoy life again. And so mm-hmm. he became a great healer. And so he traveled all around and um, was able to heal other people also. And then so once again, we ask the subconscious to come in and, um, you know, why was he experiencing all of these things? And the subconscious, you know, just talks about, you know, um, that it's it's, uh, not true that people have to suffer anymore, that that's an old program, a very old program that, that people have been carrying for a long time and that we are loved, and, and there really is no more need uh, for suffering in that way. And what was interesting was that I, going back and rereading these, because these have been a while since I've done these sessions, I went ahead and copied this and, and sent this to my, my friend again, 
And he had forgotten about it, and he had not been listening to it again. <laughs> and so it's right? so important to realize that part of the healing in doing this work is listening to your sessions keeping your sessions, and then maybe a few months down the road when you're struggling to listen to your session again. And he was so thankful that I sent that to him again because he said, oh, yeah, yeah, I forgot. That's true. That's, I, I need this right now. And um, so these sessions are, are really profound. I myself have had four sessions by other QHHT practitioners. And in one mm-hmm. session, I actually am a man currently now in – Los Angeles, and that is just what is so mind-boggling about this work. <laughs> <It's, laughs> and you're not that actually, far from there. You're, you're in California I mean, yourself, so you ever think about maybe running into him down there, huh? <laughs> oh, that'd be great. But he is suffering from post-traumatic uh, stress disorder uh, from from some work that he did um, in the military. And what's so fascinating about that is I've had constant thoughts about helping people with uh, post-traumatic stress disorder. So yeah. we, we are far more we are far more amazing than what we have any idea. We are just amazing, and, and we are awakening to this. So I, I thank yeah. you so much for having this show. I so thank Dolores for developing her work. It's so profound, and I, I'm so lucky to be a part of it. Yeah. Well, thank you so much for calling in, Lorraine. You know, I've I've always said, I even said this to Dolores before she passed on, we're only scratching the surface, even though she discovered so much and made so many profound, um, you know, realizations and and, um, discoveries of her own, that there's so much further for us to go. And it's just expanding in, in an incredible way. And uh, I thank you for being part of our community and um, and helping others. How can people and find you? you in- <laughs> yes, yes, you're I'm so welcome. How can people website. find you? Uh huh. Sure, I'm in Sa- I'm in Sacramento, California, and they mm-hmm. can find me on my website of energyhealingandhypnosis.com. And I mm-hmm. also do energy healing work, and I'm just continuing to expand, and it's so exciting. It's a very exciting time in my life. Oh, how wonderful. So thank you, Candace. I'm I'm so thrilled to know you. I'm thrilled to have you on, on our team. Thank you so much, Lorraine. And um thank you. I'll talk to you on the forum. Bye bye. Bye bye. Thank you. So lovely Lorraine Chilson. Well, before inviting our next caller on, I thought I might share one of my own favorite stories. Q H H T case study of my own, um, a session that I had several years ago down in, in Austin, Texas. And, and I had this lovely woman contact me and she described that the reason she wanted to have the session was that she was a healer on her own. And she said she thought she was a good healer and she'd helped many clients have happier and healthier lives. But for some reason, she couldn't seem to heal herself. And she'd been attempting and trying many different things, many different ways, many different modalities over the years to help herself. And she hadn't been successful. This was a lovely woman. And I'm just going to call her Lisa for uh, for this story, but it's not her real name. And she came into my office in this lovely flourish of scarves and crystal jewelry. She was, um, she was a sweet woman. She had an air of peace about her. She really exuded a vibration of love. She very much was somebody who helped others in, in a big hearted way. And as soon as she walked into the door, smiling, grinning broadly, I, I just knew we were going to have a great session. She had amazing energy. And this woman was in her mid 60s. And she was a practicing Reiki and primarily a crystal healer in a large metropolitan city. And she had a very busy practice. And she had happy and five clients. She had a lot of friends and her life was pretty good. Um, Her biggest issue was her physical condition. And so her story was this. She was the first child in her family. And she'd been born severely 
prematurely at a time when our medical profession profession was just not adept at saving these little babies. She was born at around 28 weeks gestation, and she only weighed about a pound and a half. And her mother was also traumatized during the birth. And the doctor and the family did not at all expect the baby to survive. They were mostly focused on the mother during this time. Lisa was told she was actually put into a shoebox and set aside, you know, just aside to the room because nobody thought that she would live while everyone else attended to her mother. And her mother did survive. And when the doctors and the others bothered to look into the box, they realized that Lisa was still alive as well. They really were very surprised about that. But Lisa, of course, lived because she lived into her 60s. And as an infant, Lisa had a lot of trouble breathing. She was born very early. She was a sickly baby. She caught every illness that came around. Her lungs were scarred. They never really worked correctly. She had severe asthma her entire life, and she was taking various medications. She had inhalers, but they just weren't working anymore. And to add to these complications, she actually lived in a city known for its pretty dirty air. And she had a raspy voice and kind of some labored breathing. All right, so here we are. Hopefully... You all can hear me now? <laughs> Do we have audio? If somebody in the chat room could let me know if we have audio. Okay, there we go. All right, well, thank you. I have no idea what happened. Um, the other connection remains. <laughs> it says everything's fine on the other con connection, so thank you all for letting me know. I don't know where I cut off. Um, so I wanted to finish my story about Lisa. So we were talking about the fact that she was taken back into a past life as a crystal healer in Atlantis. And she was able to connect with herself as a healer there and experience herself as a healer and see herself use these amazing crystals and all of these lights and help the people in her community. And so after experiencing that life, We then asked the higher self why we were shown the Atlantean life. And the higher self explained that she'd been a healer in many, many incarnations, and she was continuing that experience in her current life. And so then I asked the higher self, the subconscious is what Dolores called it, but we asked the higher self, why was Lisa born so early? Why did she have the breathing challenges that she did? And the answer was really surprising, and that's why I really love this story. It was such an amazing uh, answer to hear, and it made so much sense. So they said that the scarred lungs and the limited breathing were, were a planned event in Lisa's life, and that this disability acted something like speed breaks in her life. She was such a powerful healer that if she would have had all of her energy, all of her capabilities in place during the 60s and 70s during her prime, she would have had difficulty being accepted for her talents in her family and in her community and culture at that time. So the asthma and the diminished lung capacity slowed her down so that she would progress gradually as a healer and have smaller healing achievements and discoveries over time than if she was completely healthy. So this was an amazing answer. And so then I asked, of course, about if she needed to continue to um, have these speed breaks, if she needed to, to be slow, you know, and, and held down in, in her capacity because times had really changed, and we as a society are more accepting of this type of healing than ever, and the higher self said that's true. And then I said, well, can we heal the condition right now then? And the higher self said it, it is no longer necessary. It's achieved the intended purpose, and so then it said that it would heal her immediately. And this was an amazing thing to watch. It was, it was much like what... 
uh, Georgie, our first caller, was talking about when you watch the body sometimes of a, of a client when they're experiencing the healing during the session, sometimes you can see things. Sometimes it doesn't look like anything's happening, very honestly. Sometimes it doesn't look like that, but it doesn't really mean anything. But this session, I absolutely saw the energy wash over this woman. And I watched wave after wave after wave of energy wash over and through her. And I could see her body undulating on the bed. It was a truly grand and wonderful thing to behold. And I could feel the energy myself because some of that just kind of washes you know through the room and actually over my own body and after some time the higher self said that the healing was complete i then asked if she'd need the medications she'd been on any longer and the higher self said no but not to freak everyone out the doctors etc she should wean off of them slowly even though she didn't need any of them anymore And as I counted her out of trance, I don't think I will ever forget what happened next. Her eyes flew open and she sat bolt upright and she just threw the covers off the bed onto the floor and she started jumping around the room, just like she was a human pogo stick. She just started jumping and jumping and sucking in deep breaths of air. And she kept saying, oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Listen to me, listen to me, I can breathe. And she was whooshing air in and out of her lungs. At such a rate, I actually thought she might hyperventilate, but I was grinning from ear to ear just watching her jump around the room. She just kept breathing deeply with no wrath and jumping. She just wouldn't stop jumping. And at one point, she stopped jumping, and both of her hands clapped over her knees. And she practically shouted. She said, my knees. My knees don't hurt. I said, your knees? You never said anything about your knees. And she was laughing hysterically at this time. And she said, well, she said her knees didn't mean anything at all in her her life. They didn't really seem to matter. She just cared about her lungs. She said, well, I have arthritis in my knees. And then she said, nope, I had arthritis in my knees. And she started jumping up and down again. And, And then she started doing these deep knee bends and just whooshing and whooshing the air in and out of her lungs. And over and over again, she would say, they don't hurt now. Nothing hurts. Nothing at all hurts. And I can breathe. I can breathe. I can breathe. And in the debrief, Lisa described the vision of angels surrounding her and the presence of the Christ consciousness standing behind them. And her eyes sparkled as she described the beings who assisted in, in her healing. It was really, really amazing. I do want to emphasize that not all QHHT sessions are this dramatic. And not all of them result in immediate healing. But it happens often enough to make this work extraordinary and wonderful and worth a few hours' investment to give it a try. And many sessions do provide similar dramatic healing, but a lot of them over time, meaning the healing was and is done on the etheric level, but it takes a little time to manifest on the, on the physical level. So um, Lisa actually contacted me several weeks after her session Her healing had remained manifest, and she'd only taken small remnants of the medication since that time, and she was planning on stopping them all together very soon. And I remember her telling me it was like beginning life all over again. And this woman, like I said, was in her 60s. Having the sweet pleasure of deep, easy breathing is such a blessing, and it helped me remain energized to help others in her work. And can you imagine? Can you imagine being somebody who was born not being able to breathe and take in a full deep breath and then able to finally do that when she's in her 60s. I mean, that's just astonishing to me. And uh, it was one of my favorite sessions of all time. So thank you for listening to my session story. And uh, we're going to welcome Nicole Radke to the program. And Nicole was on the show just last week. Hi, Nicole. Hi, Candace. Hi, how are you doing? <laughs> You're in my well, backyard. Doing, yes, I know. I know. We're, we're just right. We're right here. There's several of us right here. Actually, right. earlier today, I thought maybe I should just have a party and have some people over, but the day just went went by so 
so quickly and it just didn't happen. And um, thanks for joining me again. We we talked just recently, but um, please share share a new session story with our listeners tonight, Nicole. Well, I, I I absolutely love listening to your story, um, and it's just amazing to me the the things that happen in a session. Um, I have a really quick quick story um, that's kind of unusual. I had a, a a young guy that came in. He was about twenty six, um, and he experienced himself as a ghost. Wow! In his past life, uh, and it was such a fascinating story. But um, he was newly married, and their little baby was about two weeks old by the time that he came to see me. And uh, basically, he was just curious. He he'd, he'd always been t- um, experiencing things through his life, and so he just did it out of curiosity. But he did have a lot of anger issues and a lot of anxiety, and um, the the p- past life that came up for him. He, when he came into into the scene, he was standing in, at a baseball field, and he was watching a game. And I had him look, you know, what he's wearing so I can see, you know, what the time period that is. And he was wearing blue jeans and a T-shirt, and he had a ball cap on, and there was people in the, in the stands, and the game was going. And he walked off to the side. There were some woods on the side. And he walked off. And he kept feeling like he was looking for something. He was looking for somebody. And at the same time, he felt like somebody was was following him. It was this real bizarre um, kind of feeling when he was explaining it. And it kind of scared him. And what ended up happening, he reached a ravine or a cliff, and somebody pushed him off the cliff, and he died, broke his back, and he died. After he left the body, he was... Um, he was kind of floating in the scene. He experienced himself still, you know, seeing himself the same way, still wearing the same clothes, except that he could tell he wasn't in a physical body. And he kept looking for his daughter. He was go into different buildings, um, different stores. It seemed like it was it was in a town or in a city. And he kept looking for his daughter. And when we got to the SC, we found out what happened. And the person that shoved him off the cliff was was his wife in that life. And they didn't get along, and their daughter ran away when she was about 12 years old in that life. Didn't want anything to do with him. And the mother of the wife was so upset that she ended up killing her husband. Wow. The interesting thing was that the wife in that life is his wife in his current lifetime. And that daughter was the new baby that they had just had two weeks prior to that. Oh, my God. And all his anger issues and the anxiety that that had been plaguing him for the last year of his life, especially um, after they had gotten married, everything made complete sense to him. And had the SE told them that, you know, they have a chance to, to kind of do it again and there's some karma aspects to it or some agreements that they have to work out. Um, and he's going to have some, some issues with the daughter to work out in the future, but really gave him a lot of things um, that explained, you know, the where the anger and the anxiety came from. But it was fascinating that in between part, he just he was kind of just roaming around and didn't realize that that he had died. He tried to interact with people; nobody would interact back with him. But to him, it just seemed like life was normal, except nobody would speak to him. So it was fascinating. It was a short ses- session that we had. Um, didn't really remember anything of the session. You Very know, interesting. Good, good candidate, but it was fascinating. And so during this time when he was just wandering around, mm. because he didn't know what his state was, I guess you didn't really either. So you didn't know. No. no. The only thing that we could tell from when we were exploring this scene is he kept feeling like, like somebody was watching him, somebody was behind him. Um, it really concerned him. And he, he didn't know who had pushed him off the cliff. And even huh. when he left the body, he he couldn't make out the features or who it, who it was. It's almost like that information was hidden. It wasn't revealed to him until the SC told him and, and kind of filled in some of the blanks for him. And I think that's important with, with any session that you have is to you know, not try too hard to fill in all the information 
um, if it's just not coming. You know, right. sometimes you you have to ask the SC to to fill in some of the 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 missing links or the missing information. Sure. So you can <laughs> analyze the information before, you know, as mm-hmm. you're getting it. Excellent. Well, thank you so much for well, thank you. It's nice telling us. <laughs> nice to tune in again. Thank you so much. I do appreciate it. And Nicole, remind everyone how they can get a hold of you here in the Kansas City area. They can reach me on my website. It's naturalpathways.co. Okay. Yes, yeah, you're you're closer. You're St. Joseph, right? That's so right. that's not but that's not that far from here. No, about an hour. Yep, there you go. Well, thanks again. I do appreciate you taking some time out of your evening to speak with us. Thank Have you. A good, good evening. evening. Okay, bye bye. All right. Oh, goodness. Okay, there we are. So, thank you so much again, all callers and listeners, for listening to these amazing stories. And I've got one of my favorite, favorite people on on hold now, and I want to bring her on the air right now. I know she's got tons of stories. I'm looking forward to hearing what story she might want to tell us today. And what I'd like to do now is welcome my dear friend, Marilyn Dyke, to the program. Hi, Marilyn. Hi. Can you <laughs> Hi, hear me? sweetie. I can <laughs> hear you. We had a little technical okay. difficulty earlier, but yeah. I think we're up and running right now. Thank you so much for calling in. Oh, it's a pleasure. I was just listening to these fabulous stories. I mean, you, you just can't uh, hear enough, can you? <laughs> nope. <laughs> They're nope, just they great. Just, they just don't get old, do they? they you no, just never, never know how. You never know what what the punchline is or how things are going to work out. And just when you yeah. think you've you've um, heard it all, uh, you really. You really haven't. <laughs> no, I know. Yeah, and just in, in working, um, you, you know, with my own sessions, you think, oh, yeah, you know, I've I've uh, heard just about everything, and then I listen to you guys, and it's just totally, <laughs> you know, I've, I haven't had any experiences like that. It's just completely different. So this is really good, a great way to share. It is really great, a great, yeah. fun way to share. So Marilyn has a wonderful practice in, in Vancouver. What story do you have to tell us tonight, Marilyn? Okay, well, this is a story uh, actually I blogged about and put on the forum uh, a couple of years ago, and it's uh, the blog is uh, a chat with Jesus, in, uh, intervention on free will and healing and memory wash. And this was just a lovely person. He was just uh uh, very, I would say he was so ready for the session. Uh, it was you—you you could see how everything was just unfolding so beautifully for him. And uh, I'll just touch on the, you know, what I blogged about uh, because sure. that was uh, n- not what I'm going to talk about now. Because uh, it was just the uh, after he went through the past life, he found himself uh, sitting on a bench talking to Jesus. And they're chatting, and they're just uh, sort of exchanging war stories, <laughs> and it was about their different lifetimes, you know. And they're having a great time. And he's, and so I started asking questions, and I said, "Well, do you between every life do you uh, connect with Jesus and 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 talk to him in this state?" And he said, "Well, you know, not." every life but most of the lives and then i <laughs> asked more questions about um you know it's um i was interested to know if the um the soul like the larger soul like he is a facet of the soul i uh, was mm-hmm. wondering if he is a facet of the same soul that jesus is the facet of and he said uh, the answer was yes uh, and that, Je- but although Jesus has only incarnated once as Jesus, he has incarnated on the earth in other lives as other beings, which was really interesting. Eh? But it was a it was a great conversation that they had, and we went on to some other things as well. But anyway, what I wanted to talk about tonight with this session. Uh, was that when we got to um, more when I was asking questions of his SC about the healing, he had had a, uh, a 
bad car accident about, I think he said, seven years before this session. And uh, I guess uh, they had to um, fix a bone in his hip or the top of his leg that had shattered, and so they had to put a metal piece in this bone. Mm -hmm. And I remember at the time there was some talk, and I believe it was on the forum, and it may have been even Dolores said that so far at that time she had never had the FC change bone into metal. And here, you know, and so I'm I'm really excited about this. (laughs) Okay, I think you meant to meant to say change metal into bone. Oh, did I say it backwards? Sorry. You okay, said it I'm backwards, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Sorry about it. Change that's metal right. into bone, yeah. That's what yeah. we want. So mm-hmm. anyway, um, they had put this metal piece in. Now, this man was an actor who does his own stunts, and he had constant pain from this metal piece. It was really bothering him. So it, during the session, this client, he, they, he really surrendered and allowed the information to flow. It was beautiful. And his higher self, his SC, did not disappoint, and it was very chatty and very helpful. So when I asked the SC if it would change the metal piece in his leg back into bone, they affirmed that, yes, they could do this, and they got busy fixing it. And as mm-hmm. they're, they're fixing this and changing the metal back into bone, they're, they're chatting away, and at one point they said to me, now, he doesn't know this, but there may be a future class action lawsuit over <laughs> this metal piece that was put in. And he's it, because, and there again, this is the SC talking, because it is illegal in Canada to put a defective piece in a human body. Now, I had no idea, and, and the client had no idea about this, and he had no inkling of there being a class action lawsuit. So the SC said, now, we we don't want to change all of the metal back into bone because at some point in the future, he may they may want to take an x-ray to prove that he had this piece of metal in his leg. So, so they, they fix it, it left some metal, and but took uh, you know all the pain that associated with this was completely healed is gone the client came out of the session and you know there was no pain he wasn't feeling anything uh he was everything else was great and uh he had you know he had a wonderful session he went home and about 2 months later i uh, phoned him and was talking to him and I asked him how his leg was, and he says, well, you know, uh, because I, when you don't have the pain, you kind of forget that you ever did have the pain. And uh, so he, he was fine, you know, and that was kind of reminding him that he, at one, at one point, his leg was sore. And he says, you know, in fact, the other day I was walking by the mirror in the bedroom, and I noticed this red mark on my leg. It was about an inch long. And I got up close to the mirror, and when I took a look, I realized that that's all that was left of a 12-inch scar. So not only wow. did the SC heal uh, change the metal back into bone, but they also healed the scar. And he had so he had completely forgotten. That's amazing. That's yeah, just, that's so really amazing. beautiful. Yeah, and how and how amazing too that 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 the higher self is so pragmatic that uh, it could possibly uh, <laughs> realize that it it you need to leave a little metal in there because you need to benefit from from yeah. from these people being deceptive and uh, putting something defective, I guess, in, in yeah. into his body. It is like yeah, just yeah. Amazing. I thought that was that yeah. So it, it was it was quite funny the way they said it too because it's just like you're having a conversation with somebody, yeah. and, you know, your you know, your greatest friend, and you're just having this conversation, and well, you know, <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh my gosh! Oh my gosh! I haven't had anyone with metal in body for a while, but uh, a few well, years ago. Know. Yeah, go ahead. Yeah. Oh, I was I was going to say. Um, 
uh, about the time that this, uh, when this session was held, which was in 2013, that's when all of a sudden, um, like when I posted this, there were other people on the forum mm-hmm. that were having metal changed into bone. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So it was like it, it's sort of like this little cluster, and then, you know, it, it's uh, it's. It, it's like the breakthrough, I guess, and then you know we've had other cases along the along the way as well of metal yeah. being changed back into bone, and also the um, um, I don't I don't know who posted the session about the um, and what oh it's just on the tip of my tongue uh, what was it? it that was Susan and it was her gallbladder that was yeah. reformed. Yeah. 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 Okay. The, the one. Uh, yeah. The wonderful Susan Thomas in um, yeah. in Des Moines, Iowa. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Uh-huh. <laughs> uh, because I had I haven't had a whole organ uh, be replaced, but shortly after uh, I heard about her session, I they have um, uh, taken tissue from elsewhere in the body and yeah. formed a part of an organ to replace mm-hmm. that part that was missing. Mm-hmm. So to, to, to fill in the story for our listeners, um, lovely, lovely practitioner lovely. in the Des Moines, Iowa area named Susan Thomas, and she had a session, and she was asking about the fact that her gallbladder had been um, removed. And in her session, her higher self said that they could rebuild it. They could reform it and rebuild it to uh, make her complete again. And when the practitioner asked how that was going to happen, um, Susan's higher self said, well, all of the organs in her body are donating um, parts and cells from their, own, um, from their own self. So pieces of themselves, they're donating as a group to be able to reform and recreate the gallbladder, which is a beautiful session about the recreation of the of the organ for her. So thanks for reminding mm-hmm. me of that one, Marilyn. Yeah. Yeah, it was and a beauty. And, you know, it was a beauty. You know, I wanted to touch upon something else you said, too, about the clusters, because I had not one, not two, but three in the space of, gosh, just a couple of weeks, uh, people, all women, who had metal parts in their bodies as well. And ah. It tends to ha- – and, and it, this has been a couple, couple three years now that this happened, but um, it tends to really happen that way where they kind of cluster together like that. And I remember after my third session, I like, calling over to um, Dolores' office, and she had just herself had one herself where somebody had come in and the higher self said that they would replace the metal in the body with bone and tissue. So. Yeah. You know, I think it was probably happening all of us at the same time or nearly the same time. It just seems to work out that way for some reason. Some reason. Yeah, yeah, it's interesting how that happens. And I quite often when I check onto the forum, um, things that have happened in my sessions are, you know, something new is showing up on the forum and it's also mm-hmm. showing session so yeah it is really neat how it i don't know if that's the um you know the frequency shift is mm-hmm. you know mm-hmm. to a point where something like this can happen or because mm-hmm. really what the sc can heal everything, everything. Mm-hmm. Ab- yeah absolutely everything i mean yeah. that's that's why i like to tell that story that i told earlier about this woman with the lungs because it's a birth defect if if, yeah. if your higher self can can heal uh, you know, a 65-year-old birth defect, it can do anything, yeah. <laughs> just anything at all, anything at all. Definitely, Oh, yeah. gosh, it's so nice to hear your voice again. Hey, Marilyn, do you want to give our listeners a little um, um, a little uh, sneak preview about an upcoming show that you're going to have with me? And, uh, are you prepared to say something about that, maybe just a, oh, sure. a sentence yeah. or two? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. So Marilyn and... And uh, practitioner, go ahead. Tell us they're going to okay. come. What, what day is it? It's it's in December, right? Yes. Let me look at my calendar. Isn't it December fourth? I think it might be. Uh, I, I yeah. can look at December it real quick. 4th. Okay, so the fourth of December. Uh huh. Yeah. So uh, my very dear friend Tamara McGillivray. I mean, Tamara and I go back. 
25 years now. Mm-hmm. She has been my uh, mentor, my sidekick, my cohort through all kinds of energy healing classes and da-da-da-da-da. And uh, I remember back then she used to say, you know, the one thing I can't seem to do is I can't seem to learn astrology. I, I just have this m- mental block against us about astrology she just couldn't get it eh and Mm -hmm. all of a sudden i think it was around the year 2000 all of a sudden she got it and she's (laughs) uh and she went through uh she's doing her master's now and she's a fabulous astrologer and I couldn't, uh, you know, I mean, we joke around. I said, you know, before, when, when I was making my agreements to come into this life, I, I said, I'm not coming in this life without Tamara. <laughs> uh-huh. <laughs> because she's, every every time something's going on in my life, I give her a call and go, what's, you know, what's happening in my chart? And is she just lays it right out. It's just amazing how all the pieces are there. Anyway. Tamara, my dear friend Tamara, is going to uh, come on the show, and she's going to discuss uh, Dolores Cannon's uh, birth chart, her astrology chart, and to sort of, uh, and when you see it, when you look at it with an astrologer's eyes, you can really see why Dolores was so persistent and so detail orientated mm-hmm. and you know she just never gave up and she was so thorough and you know she just um and, and so public as well mm-hmm. it's all there in her chart but it was you know if you don't have astrologer's eyes you don't see it all but anyway it should be a fascinating um show because uh i want to hear all the details what tamara uh, flushes out with uh, Dolores's chart as well. Well, thanks for giving us a little sneak preview because I can't wait to find out about that. I mean, I love yes. the idea of learning more and more about Dolores. And it, interestingly enough, you know, it, as big a, of a and a larger than life kind of person as she was, even in life. Since she's been gone, she's getting even bigger, at least in my life, my world, and my perception, her yeah. her, um, her reach, her expertise, her influence is just expanding. And I, I think that she has a large part to do uh, with that from, from the other side. So um, this is going to be a fascinating show. Mm-hmm. Marilyn, thank you so much for taking time out of your evening to speak with us. Tell us how people can find you in the Vancouver area. Okay, well, my website is bodysoulapothecary.com, um, and I know that's a long one. Uh, apothecary <laughs> is A-P-O-T-H-E-C-A-R-Y. <laughs> but okay. like Body Soul Apothecary, yep. Yep. Okay, and well, this has been a pleasure. It was such a great pleasure to hear your voice again, Marilyn, and we'll see you on the forum. Yeah, we will. All right. Good night. Take care. Great show. (laughs) Bye-bye. It's a really great Marilyn Dyke, so we'll have her on here um, coming up next month. And mostly, I think we have gotten to all of the people who want to tell stories tonight, but we're going to welcome on a very special guest here towards the end of the show. We have Michelle Walling joining us. Hi, Michelle. Hey, Candace. How's it going tonight? <laughs> well, except for that one little technical glitch, which I still don't understand what happened, it's been great. I know. I I thought, well, do I need to get on to the, you know, to the main switchboard and see what's going on? But you know, it, it came back, and that's great. And I wanted to uh, I wanted to call in and share with all of your listeners tonight, Candace, that. You are actually going to be in person speaking at our N5B Superpower Activation Conference uh, February 20th here in lovely Sarasota, Florida. And um, I, I think it's going to be a, a wonderful conference. We have seven high vibrational speakers, including yourself, and I'm just so thrilled to be able to share you with the N5B audience. I'm cannot tell you how honored I am that you asked me to participate. 
with such really great and lovely other people and another QHHT practitioner. Darcy's going to be speaking with us, I believe, about some of her bioenergy and energy healing, but she's part of our, our um, community as well of practitioners. So I, I look so forward to seeing her again. Yes, Dar- Darcy Hotchkiss is um, a bioenergy healer, and she actually... It's a small world because I met her through um, a lady uh, named Riley uh, who had made contact with me, said she was coming to Sarasota and, you know, could I um, have a session with her? We ended up just having lunch and she brought Darcy along. Well, Darcy is a very fascinating person. (laughs) She has so much history and so so many stories to tell. And she, um, uh, Riley had been taking a class with Zorin, who is our keynote speaker, uh, Zorn Hochstatter, and he is like a, a like a Jedi, like a, a wizard. And he's an energy worker, okay? So um, Darcy is also a master energy worker as well. So we have a healing theme going on, and of course with um, with you, we can, you know, you can talk about um, QHHT and how it has healed people and gives some people some ideas, you know, at the conference mm-hmm. about, um, you know, how they can find a practitioner, um, how to prepare for a QHHT session. And I'm just really looking forward to having you up there with, with, uh, with all of us. We also have about 22 vendor tables then and all of our you know all of our speakers will have their own table where we can do meet and greets. The unique thing about the vendor tables on this conference is they're actually in the same room, although they are divided by a half wall. So hmm. if you're shopping, you can still hear what's going on in front. So that's really oh. cool. Oh, really wonderful! Uh, you know. If, if I hadn't said thank you already, let me say thank you again for uh, having having a re, have a reason to leave Kansas in February and go to to Florida for a couple of days. <laughs> I am really really looking forward to it. It's going to be such a great time, and I get to finally yes, meet you and Greg in person, and it's going to be it's going to be great. And I think are you now are you planning on are you still considering a, a live stream option or what what's going on with that absolutely we're pricing it out right now we're trying to keep it as low as possible for the pricing mm-hmm. to uh to to share with everybody the whole event if you can't be there and so mm-hmm. we're still working on that uh, but tickets are on sale and you can go to uh um, n5devents.com to find mm-hmm. out all about the vendors, um, you're you're on that page. There's a nice little <laughs> page for you. And um, let's see. Oh yes, and the next day, uh, Sunday. This is an all day event on a Saturday. All day. Mm-hmm. I mean, from like nine to ten to seven. But on mm-hmm. Sunday, we're also having a free um, meditation meetup on the beach, and we're calling it uh, the Harmonic Emergence. <laughs> and we're having this about two hours before sunset. We're going to join hands and get into a circle or several circles, ah. several concentric circles. We're going to send healing uh, and love to uh, the planet and everyone on the planet and to the, you know, to the solar system, galaxy, and universe. And then we're going to do a little sun gazing. And then every Sunday night on Siesta Key Beach, they have a free drum circle so we're all going to sit around the drum circle and just enjoy the rest of our evening. Wow. Wow. Oh, wow. That just sounds wonderful. So, so yes, all of you out there who can make it there, great. If not the live stream, but, you you know, you don't get any of the sand and surf with live streams. So, uh, you know, try yeah, to that's explore true. that, right? <laughs> that's true. Uh, I really look so. forward. Actually, actually, Candace, I'm going to be meeting you before the event. Um, I'm really looking forward to my QHHT session with you. I'm going to try to share as much of that as possible with, with our listeners and our readers on N5D. And, um, yeah, I'm really wanting to, to find out um, how I can serve better. You know, I mean, I think I serve, you know, I serve a lot, but what I really mean by that is, you know, um, 
from my higher self, I want to find out, you know, what I did possibly, you know, in past lives to be able, Mm -hmm. my key components, like what I can narrow my focus down to. Because I have my, I have uh, my feet in so many different things going on right now. Mm -hmm. Um, mm-hmm. But I'm really liking these conferences, and uh, I just want to see, um, you know, about my psychic abilities to try to, you know, um, get those turned on a little bit more so I can help other people turn on their superpowers, and that's what this conference is about. So we sh- we're having our session at the end of this <laughs> month, and I should have a lot of information to share at the conference about superpowers from my subconscious. Oh gosh, I oh I just can't wait. It's going to be just a power packed end of 2015. I tell you what, getting ready to move into then 2016 is going to be amazing. 2016 is going to be an a, just an amazing year. It's going to be so much different, I think, than 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 the one that we're just coming through. Don't you? Doesn't it seem like it's going to be lighter and brighter and more filled with opportunities? It does. I I feel like we had you know a really big shift on the eleven eleven, um, mm-hmm. and, and even a few days before I could feel it. It it just felt lighter. We haven't had any chemtrails in the last six days in Sarasota, whereas before six days before that we had heavy chemtrailing every single day. So it is like we you know when we step outside and look up, it is truly like. We're already in a higher vibrational dimension. We um, we haven't seen a lot of UFO uh, activity with our night vision goggles either uh, in the last six days. So I kind of find that a strange coincidence along with no chemtrail. So I feel like we've, we've shifted into to a higher vibrational field, and uh, we're going to be talking more about that as we go between now and the conference. Uh, you know, Greg is going to be a speaker as well. He's going to kick off the conference. And uh, I'm I'm really happy for him to get out and, and to share his what he does to mm-hmm. uh, turn his uh, DNA codons. So we have Carrie Ellis. She's an author of the book uh, 21st Century Superhuman. And we have Diane Canfield, who's a psychic medium, and she is an energy um, expert. She can feel the shift, these waves, when they come through and reports on them. And so mm-hmm. I, along with everybody else, we have a very interesting panel to share with people. And the best thing is people getting together, like-minded people, mm-hmm. and being able to share codes, um, you know, healing and information, and the, to just to know that they're not alone. So I'll let you go, and I really appreciate you bringing me on to share the fact that you're going to be live in person and, and be able to meet people. So even if you don't live in the Sarasota area, you can still come and visit for the weekend and see a wonderful conference, February 20th. Well, we'll be talking more about that in the future. Thank you for coming on as well, Michelle. You are always welcome, and uh, I appreciate your support in, in everything that you do, not only for me and QHHT, but for the world. Uh, we're very blessed to have you on the planet. Oh, well, we're blessed to have you, Candace, and uh, we just love your addition to N5D Radio, and I appreciate, you know, you have um, you you have one of the highest ranked shows that we have and we you just have so many wonderful uh fans and people who just love hearing your stories and so i thank you for for joining us and, and being a part of our family well it's been so much fun and i'm sending you hugs and i get to see you soon girlfriend okay, okay. we'll talk to you soon <laughs> good night good night okay, to Greg good as night. well all right okay. bye-bye bye okay well i'd like to thank all of you who've taken the time to call in and share stories tonight and those of you in the in the chat room participating as well and I'd like to thank all of you out there who are listening this evening as well as those of you who are going to listen in the future in the archive and I'd like to remind those of you looking for a practitioner of Dolores's methods that you can find those members of our community, those who share these amazing stories with us on her original support forum, at Dolores Cannon, QHHT.com. That's Dolores Cannon, QHHT.com. And you can find out a little bit more about my own practice of QHHT at NewEarthJourney.com. 
And I actually have another little radio show on biweekly Tuesdays, and it's on BBS Internet Radio, and it is called New Earth Journey, and I go on a little different tangent on those shows there. So please join us again next Friday where we're going to have another amazing show lined up for you. Good night, and happy Friday the 13th. I hope it's been happy and magical for you all. Thank you, and good night.